Klingberg here today behind the camera and I thought I'd give you a little tour of how I'm going to bond the D-tube to the spar and the setup that I have to do that. Um, and let's take a little closer look here. What you see right now is you see the center section of the wing set up on a table here out on my back patio and we see the right wing uh, leading edge is in place and the leading edge is comprised of the spar and the D-tube and it's pinned in place just like it would be in flight and what I've done here initially is I have taken the D-tube which is not bonded in place yet and I've uh, trimmed the end of it here this joint right here so that it matches with the center section as best I can and remember this is a hand-built aircraft uh, using just templates there's no fancy CAD drawings uh, so the fit uh, of most of the parts is all done by hand. Uh, I just fiddle with the parts, uh, shaping them and, and sizing them until they match each other. Uh, left and right are not going to be exactly the same, and uh, but all the parts will come together. And we've got a pretty good seam here. It's not too, too far off. I'm off by maybe a 32nd of an inch here on the leading edge. Uh, it sticks up a little bit here, uh, but it's not too bad. piece of vinyl tape goes over this joint for flying just to seal it off, which is typical for sailplanes. Normally the wings are taped after they're installed. Um, we're set up here with a proper sweep angle and all of that. That's predetermined uh, by the rib that's inside here. The ribs are already bonded to the spar and uh, that sets the sweep angle that's here. And I have it taped in place uh, to ensure that it doesn't move around uh, once we get onto the bonding. This tape is going to be removed. We're going to take this whole assembly, we're going to take the D-tube spar assembly into the garage for applying the uh, adhesives and then I'm going to bring it back out here and install it for the final cure of the epoxy so that it's in the right configuration. So on the root rib here in the center section you'll see that I've marked the cord line and I have a piece of angle aluminum on there and I have uh, an angle meter, I like to call them dangleometers, and that will be set until it reads zero, so we know the center section is level. And out here I have a sawhorse holding the wingtip, and there's a somewhat complicated mechanism here. Let me see if I can shoot this in such a way that the sun's very bright. You'll see that I have a bolt uh, going through the, uh, the wing joiner for the wingtips. The wingtips bolt onto this fitting that's underneath here. I'm going to show you from the other side. And on that bolt I have a magnetic uh, dangleometer that uh, I'm going to set so that this is 90 degrees, absolutely vertical. And what I have here is I have uh, a screw jack, essentially. Uh, there's a little 2x4 with a piece of angle aluminum and it has these wing nuts on it that I can adjust. And by having these wing nuts like this, I can turn these back and forth on a very fine increment until it reads exactly 90 degrees, and I know that I have this fitting vertical. So I know that the wing is, sorry about the aircraft overhead, I live close to Moffett Field, and we get a lot of cool air traffic here. Uh, so I know that the uh, wing is level, and I know that this is vertical, so we're all properly aligned. This rib is already set with the proper washout relative to having a spar vertical. So I know when this spar is vertical that I have my three and a half degrees of washout here. And you see I've done the same thing here that I have at the root. I have the cord line marked on the rib and I can set uh, an angle gauge here also just to make sure that we have the proper washout set in the wing. And last but not least, on the bottom of the fitting here I have a wing nut that allows me to raise and lower the entire wing uh, until the wing is level uh, in the direction of roll uh, along its span. And if I give you a quick look on the back side here, uh, there is a level set on the lower flange of the I-beam spar and that level tells me when uh, I have the wing level in that direction and I adjust that with that wing nut that's down here underneath. Now the bolt itself sits in a hole that's in this sawhorse and that hole does not go through uh, the wood all the way. It goes down about halfway. So that allows, let's see if I can loosen this up a little bit here, that allows the wing to tilt like this. 
so as I adjust it, that bolt can move in that hole. That's an oversized hole, and it's not drilled all the way through. And then I can adjust the angle that way. Once I have it 90 degrees, I tighten down the wing that's back here, and it's locked in place. So we're, uh, this allows me to make everything level or vertical as needed, secured in place. And once we have this all set up, this is all done before the epoxy cures. Once we have this all set up in place, then we're going to come in with these one by twos and we're going to set them right here at the edge. As you see, the D tube ends here and we're going to bring those one by twos right up to that edge like that, top and bottom. The bottom ones will have double face tape on them so that they stay in place until we can clamp. And then I'm going to come around here with some C clamps large bar clamps actually and I'm going to clamp this down so the D tube is tight to the spar and then we'll come in with uh, a little squared off tongue depressor to scrape off the excess glue that it's going to squeeze out of this joint. Uh, I have tape on the spar flange here so that the epoxy does not stick to that flange because I'm going to have to bond the wing skins and uh, the rib cap strips to this flange later we don't want a bunch of glue on it so all of this is taped off so glue doesn't go where we don't want it and we'll still come in and we'll remove the excess glue with the tongue depressor before it cures so a rather large job that has to be done quickly there's about a one hour cure time on the epoxy or i should say gel time so once we have this uh, all set up onto the spar all the glues in place we, we, we will end up with about 30, 40 minutes where we can come out here, get this mounted in place, everything aligned and locked down and clamped uh, while it sits for the final cure. Now, this might seem uh, rather complicated, and it is. Uh, I have a couple of helpers today. My wife and daughter are going to help me do this. And uh, we already did the left wing, and that's the sad part of the story. Uh, I thought that it would be possible to do just to do this process of gluing the D tube to the spar on the workbench in uh, the shop, and we did the left wing, and it looked like it came out beautiful. And I got out here and I mounted it on the center section, and it looked good. And then I discovered that that fitting out at the tip, despite my best efforts uh, in the uh, shop, that fitting was not vertical. It was actually angled back 1.7 degrees, reducing the washout by 1.7 degrees. And 1.7 out of 3.5 is a lot. It's half, 50%. So it was way off. And uh, on top of that, the, the fitting here, uh, despite my best efforts of cutting the parts, and uh, I, I thought for sure that the way that I used the templates and cut the parts, that they would just match up, but they did not. Uh, I was off by a quarter inch here at the front, sticking forward on the D-tube. It was really bad. So, unfortunately, the uh, bonding job of the D-tube to the left spar is wrong, and it's bad, and it's going to have to be redone. Uh, you're going to have to spend a day or so, go back and carefully, very carefully, grind uh, the D-tube in sections off of the spar and internal framework and make another D-tube and do the job over again. So that's going to set me back uh, two or three weeks uh, to do that work. Uh, I'm going to put in an order today for more foam. I'm out of foam uh, for making D-tubes, and that comes in from Germany. On the positive side, I will be able to work on this right wing and do all the aft portion of it, install the ribs and the spars and build the flap and the elevon and get all that work done while I'm waiting for the foam to come in from Germany, and then we can repeat the pro this process for the left wing and get a left wing that's good. Uh, and it's also a bit of an opportunity. Uh, Bob, my buddy Bob and I, we've been talking about uh, uh, doing a different type of mold for making the D-tubes, and this might give us the, the, both the time and the opportunity to try that process out. Uh, maybe we'll get that to work out. So... Uh, a bit of a screw up and it'll set the project back a bit uh, but also an opportunity uh, so we try not to get too upset about those or too much angst and we just keep working we keep moving forward and the project is going to take just a little bit longer so hang in there with me while i continue to work this thing we are coming along it's beginning to look more like a real glider and uh, i'll be back to you when we make more significant progress thanks for watching bye for now fly safe